guys, this is Nicole Van Tassel, creator of I Explore Science, um, this group, and I Explore Academy. So that's our professional development program designed to provide support as you transition to the NGSS. Um, I We had a co-planning session um, for I Explore Academy members, and we are working on, like, everybody's in a different, you know, space doing things differently. But I wanted to explore some ways that we can structure our online classroom because I know that was coming up a lot in um, this group as well as for members of iExplore Academy. So I was kind of experimenting with some of the different ideas that I saw um, and I kind of just wanted to put it together in a way that maybe gets you thinking about how you might do this. So I saw Padlet come up and um, I haven't used Padlet very much so I was just playing around with it this morning. But I wanted to tie like what you guys are doing in Padlet and things like Google Classroom and whatever learning management system you have with um, using three-dimensional instruction and storylines and all of that. So even if you are just um, providing like optional work, this is we can still be engaging our students in these things. Whether they participate or not, obviously we don't have control over, but if we can provide them with like engaging um, opportunities to explore and to talk and to learn and to collaborate, then maybe they will participate, you know? We can only do our best. So first of all, um, I d I'm messing around here with Padlet and Google Classroom, but I would say if you have like a different learning management system already that you guys are using, like don't change things up just because that's what I've done here. Definitely stick to what your students are used to, stick to what other teachers in your building are using. So if your English teacher is using a particular system, maybe you guys use the same system so that students don't have like 12 different sites to log into. Um, and if again, if you um, if your district has like chosen something already, just see what you can do with that. The one thing I did like about Padlet is it's like very visual, so it it keeps me organized. So I was using um, uh, Google Classroom, and this is great, but I mean it's not particularly pretty, and it it's just like a big list, and it can be kind of overwhelming. So my thoughts are I would use Padlet and I would actually create these things as we go along. So first of all, I do want to add another column and I would put like announcements. And I would probably have like a section on if you have something like this. Again, I just like this because it was very visual. And maybe I'm going to say like new assignments. So new assignments will be posted each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay, so because I'm thinking I'm a, I have a three parts to whatever I'm doing. So my Monday storyline is going to be this watch and wonder. So this is where I'm incorporating phenomena. We can still be incorporating phenomena into our, our online learning um, actually pretty easily. So this is a little, this is for a storyline that I have for weather. It's like a whole unit for weather. It's part of actually a longer storyline that ties some life science standards with weather, the water cycle, and climate. But this is a just a small part of the weather storyline. So I launched that storyline by looking at tornadoes and specifically this um, formation of a tornado in Kansas. I close the storyline by looking at the tornado, the formation of a tornado during a severe storm in Arizona. So that's my summative um, phenomenon, my summative assessment is that phenomenon. Um, so I'm starting with a similar, it's a tornado, but it's in a different location, different time, whatever, different example. So I have all of these links included here, but I also have them assigned in Google Classroom. So my thoughts are I would not have these things posted. And I haven't really figured out, I don't know, it doesn't look like you can like schedule these things. So I might just have on a planning document for myself, my notes about what I'm gonna put here. So I'd have let's investigate, let's talk, but I would not have anything posted right here. Um, and, but I would have watch and wonder and I'd have this video and then they have their actual assignment here. So, and that would link them over to Google Classroom, which again, my students would have their accounts. Again, none of this stuff would be posted because the goal is not to overwhelm our students. If I was a student and I came to this on the first day, I would be overwhelmed, I would probably shut down, I would probably quit. But if I just saw one thing, phenomenon review, let's talk. And Google Classroom does let you post things, like schedule them. So I just didn't do it here so that you guys could see it all. But I would do like phenomenon, let's talk. And all it says is post a summary of, oh wait, that's not the right one, sorry. That is the 
my summative one. When move down, move down. I apologize. I thought that was the first one. Um, my phenomenon is actually that video. Oh, I guess I can drag. Sorry, you can actually just drag. Um, as you can see, I'm not like super fluent in Google Classroom either. I'm just kind of exploring. Okay, so National Geographic video. Record some of your thoughts and observations as you watch the video. What do you notice? So they go into this. They can go and actually watch this video. They don't even have to leave Google Classroom. Um, this video doesn't explain the birth. It says birth of a tornado, but it doesn't explain it at all. Um, they... They kind of talk about some things. They show, like, students might notice, like, oh, wow, this is a really big storm. I've seen that radar radar on the TV before. Um, you know, I've seen, they say, oh, there's really strong winds. They might catch those things. But this is not an ex, like an explanatory video about tornadoes because we don't want to do that when we're using phenomena. We want to just show something that makes them wonder. Um, okay, so then they actually have to answer the question and they post their answers. So the students are, I set it so that students can reply to each other. Um, and what I might do is after students do these uh, initial observations, I might post um, on, so watch and wonder on the next, you know, the next day on Wednesday. I might post at the top of here, and let's say I want to do that. Can I move these? Um, yeah, you can drag them. Okay, so I might post at the top of here, National Geographic Tornado. Check out your classmates' observations and questions. Respond to two um, classmates' posts. So that might be the first thing. Okay, how do I? Ah, eh, okay. Um, that might be the first thing they do. But now I want to have some kind of exploration, and these are very simple explorations here that I've that I've done here. We're just getting into the unit. Later on in the unit, and again, simple is good right now because this is op a lot of us is this is optional work. Even if it's not optional, our students have so much other things going on. We don't want to do something crazy complex when we're just starting out here. Obviously, if this becomes maybe a more permanent situation, we're going to want to like up the ante. But for the moment, keeping it simple is totally fine. But it's still using exploration. So this is the assignment, but they don't actually have to do anything here. They're going to go to their Google Classroom. So they click into there and it opens, where do tornadoes happen? So analyze the, the map. You can also find it on the second page of the assignment. Complete the questions in the assignment. So here's the assignment, and I used Google Slides so that I could insert this as a background. This is my what I see, what it means, like way of analyzing data. So it says examine your graph carefully, what changes? And you can see there's text box here that they can actually type on. Now for number two and three, they can, here's the map, they can add their own text box. So that's why I put, you know, use text box in the drawing tool. So maybe I, they write a text box here, and they type something and they draw, I don't know, I don't know if this is actually, no, um, that's not the right thing. They like draw a line to say like, oopsies, to say I see it, how do I draw a line? <laughs> line, I don't know, um, I have to mess with that. Um, but anyway, that would be something that you would want to obviously make sure your students are familiar with. If you use Google Classroom and Google Docs all the time, that's probably not something that you need to worry about. That said, they don't have to necessarily draw lines or anything. They could always just type in their observations in a text box. Um, but you might, you know, link to a, a quick video that shows them how to use the drawing tool. Then again, students might be able to just explore and figure out. Again, you, you need to keep in mind your students' technology, like, abilities so I put use the drawing tool if you're like that would overwhelm my students don't put that part just put text box um, and obviously the using the drawing tool is like stumping me right now because I haven't used Google slides lately but anyway then um, seven user responses to like summarize what they discover. So basically my goal is the students will look at this map they'll notice like okay I hardly see any um, tornadoes out this way don't see too many up here. It seems like they're mostly centered in the like Midwest. 
Um, there's some down here in Florida. Where do tornadoes happen? I think most of these tornadoes happen in the Midwest. They don't happen. There's not as many in other places. If I look at severity, I can also see that there's not many EF5s. There's um, some EF4s. Those are really only happening in the mid Midwest. I'm not seeing any more severe ones anywhere else. Um, so the most severe ones are happening right here in the middle of the country. So maybe I want my students to walk away understanding that. Okay, then... Um, the next activity is when do tornadoes happen? So the reason I said I wouldn't post these questions here is because the goal is that students would come up with some of these questions while watching the video. That's the purpose of Phenomenon. They, we want them to watch a video, generate questions, and then we use those questions to drive the investigation forward. So I don't want to give them these two questions before they've even seen the Phenomenon. I want them to generate them. So they generated questions, and it's very likely that students are going to ask where do they happen, when do they happen, what causes them to happen, um, why do they happen in some storms and not others, like whatever it is. Um, they're going to generate some of those questions. So those are the explorations. There are two of them. The second one is where do tornadoes, oh wait, when do tornadoes happen? And there, it's the same kind of, it's the same format. So I'm trying to keep some consistency here so I'm not throwing a bunch of different types of um, like learning or questions at my students. We've been through this in class before because this is a strategy I use a lot. A lot. Um, they've done it paper and pencil. Now we're just taking it online. And again, um, it's the same strategy, but they're analyzing some different data. So again, my students are going to make observations like, uh, and this is kind of hard to read. So I actually linked to the actual uh, doc, the actual image here because you can actually see the oh. Oopsies, what's the wrong one? You can actually see the months. How do I get out of here? Um, got it. Class break. When do tornadoes happen? I actually linked to the document here, and you can actually see the months April, May, June, July. So they're going to look at this data and they're going to see that, okay, so there are some tornadoes, like tornadoes happen throughout the year. Got it. Some states have more than others like there are no tornadoes in this area or there were yeah or none in January or the at no average ones um but in uh July and in June and May like tornadoes are happening all over our country but most of them are still happening in that midwest area so if we had to identify like a tornado season it could be really um maybe a little bit of March but particularly like April May June July and then it, it slows down in the fall, August, September. But again, it's like decreasing. So students can make some observations about that. Then, again, this would release slowly. So this one would come out on Monday. These four assignments would come out Wednesday. If you want to give them all, both those explorations. Um, the discussion is basically where they're just posting what they figured out, what, what they learned. And you might use a different way to do that, um, but I think it's important that they are posting what they learned before you start like looking at other, um, just they're posting their reflections basically from the assignments. So then on the, the we always wanna have this meaning making. So really what we have is your phenomenon, we have your exploration, and then in the storyline we have our meaning making. So maybe it's a class meeting and you're posting the time and maybe you're using Zoom or using Google Hangout. Again, try to keep the amount of tools you're using, like limit it so that your students aren't logging on to 10 million things. But maybe all of your school is using Zoom or all of your school is using Google Hangout. You could have an actual meeting time where they are going to come to you. Now, I probably, I would maybe have a class meeting time as an option for all students. Um, this is like office hours kind of where you can provide support. But if your school is not mandating students to come at a certain time, I would uh, keep that optional and I would provide an opportunity for students to participate like asynchron asynchronously. Basically like a discussion board where they can go and post a summary of what you learned about tornadoes. How does it, again, tying it back to the initial phenomenon, how does it help you better understand what you saw in that National Geographic video? What questions do you have about our phenomenon? What, what questions do you have? So what I would like to see is my students talk about how, okay, in the caption, they said this happened in May. That makes sense because many tornadoes happen in May. It also said that it happens in Kansas and 
Maybe they notice this stuff, maybe they don't. And that could be questions that you use to prompt the response like, where, let's review the phenomenon. Where did it happen again? When did it happen again? Find that information in the video. Then they might be able to expand on their learning. Um, but I would have like a discussion where they would post their summaries, you can respond to them. And then maybe the next Monday, when you have, you're getting into your next phenomenon and your next, um, and this could be a smaller investigative phenomenon, um, then you might have a review like, hey, go back to this post that you guys did on Friday, respond to two, to two um, classmates' ideas. So you wanna keep that conversation going and have them continuing to like read each other's ideas because that's what would happen in an original cl in our classroom, you know, read those ideas, respond to those ideas, um, and then you get into the next investigation. So maybe it's not a watch and wonder for the following week. Maybe it's like diving right into an investigation and investigating a specific phenomena. So this is kind of just a very um, like overview of um, this like using a storyline kind of approach in even an online setting, there's just some tools you might think about. Um, just a quick few takeaways. I like the visual nature of this because it makes it really simple and it's not overwhelming. Um, I also think that you should definitely try to keep the number of tools you're using to a minimum though. So if you can do something like this, or if you think that just assigning the work in Google Classroom is fine, then go with that. That's totally fine too. I would try, I would not give students all of the assignments at once for the week because that's overwhelming. And also you don't wanna give away what they're supposed to be figuring out or what they're supposed to be investigating. And then three, I would always provide an opportunity for that meaning making. So whether it's a discussion board so that students can participate asynchronously, I think that's really important. Even if you do a live class meeting, if a student can't attend or can't engage in that, you wanna have an option for them to do so even if they miss the meeting. Um, and then just opportunities for them always to be documenting what they're figuring out and then learning. Um, next week, I'm working on a couple things, uh, but next week I'm going to share how students, can, how you can be tracking student learning and help them tie together these storylines. So tie together what they figured out in week one and, and these explorations, tie that to what they're learning in the following week just to create that like continuity of learning. But I don't want to get into that today. Um, if you have questions, let me know, drop your questions, drop your comments. Um, this is just like some ideas. Obviously, there's people who have been doing online learning for way longer and have um, a ton more strategies and all that. But I wanted to just kind of show you how you can still be incorporating that exploration and, and using your science and engineering practices, like analyzing data here, as well as this kind of continuity of learning so that students are not just doing this assignment, that assignment, but you're still focusing ar it around a phenomenon and having that like long-term investigation, that um, storyline approach to your learning. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Drop your questions. Um, I'm here to help. Uh, yeah, okay, have a great one, guys. <laughs>